join me. My name is Emma and I am a knitter, amateur sewer, occasional embroiderer and cross stitcher and pretty poor crocheter. I am also the dyer behind Yarnworthy and you can find my hand dyed yarn at www.yarnworthy.co.uk. If you would like to see me more on a day to day basis, you can follow me over on Instagram where I tend to be most active and I am at Yarnworthy Yarn over there. Um, you are joining me in Shropshire in the UK. As per the last couple of weeks, the weather here is absolutely dismal at the moment for May. We have had lots of rain, hail, thunder and lightning, little bits of sunshine. So yes, it's been very weird for this time of year. Um, it has been a long while since I did my last podcast. Um, if anybody is rejoining, hello, do you remember me? Thank you so much for coming back. Um, the last time I recorded, I think, was December the 10th last year. Um, we just got going with Advent. I'd made myself my own um, yarn Advent calendar and I was working my way through a shawl. And I had, I think, mentioned in that episode that we'd sold our house um, and we're hoping that everything was sort of going through with that. Well... Um, that all went really well. We've now moved house, which you can probably tell from the change in surrounding um, behind me at the moment. But um, obviously after that, we had Christmas, then we hit January and here in the UK, uh, we went back into lockdown. So as well as my um, one year old at the time, she's now two um, year old daughter at home. I also had my six year old son. Um, so it's quite full on with both of them being around and about all the time and having to pack up the house and then eventually move. We moved sort of mid to end of February so we've been here a couple of months now well over a couple of months actually but um still feeling very fresh absolutely loving it here we have a lot of work to do and I think as usual with these things you miss um miss like sort of underestimate how long everything's going to take you to get to get sorted but we're picking our way at it this is our forever home so as long as it takes it doesn't matter um I have got plenty of um crafting done in the meantime so I have a lot to share <laughs> so I think I will um get going with where I was up to in December there were a couple of things that I had finished um but hadn't sort of shared the final items or hadn't shared them blocked so I'm just going to whiz through those quickly first in not too much detail um so the first thing that I had finished but hadn't woven in the ends or blocked was this this is the, um, I think at the time I said it was the baby tulip sweater, but now that it's come out, I have a feeling it might be like the tulip kids or something like that. Um, as usual, I will pop all of the information for the sort of designer and the pattern um, down below in the description box if you're interested. Um, but this is a raglan sweater. I knitted this for my daughter and I knitted the 12 to 18 month size. So you can see we've got the raglan increases here. And then um, we've got this lovely scalloped hem at the bottom. Um, in terms of variations to this pattern, there were a few things that I did, nothing too sort of drastic, but um, the sleeve, first of all, the pattern caused for that to be worked straight. And I did do some decreasing just to taper the sleeve down a little bit. Um, and then for the neck band, the pattern caused for snaps for this closure at the back. Um, but I didn't have any snaps, um, so I decided to do a button band instead. And I think, was that all the amendments I did? Yes, it was. So um, if you're interested in um, sort of what, how many decreases I did and when, or how I worked the button band, um, there are details on my Ravelry page where you can find me as Emma does. Um, alternatively, I know that there are accessibility issues with Ravelry at the moment. So if you would like me to email those amendments over to you or pop them somewhere else, please do let me know and I'm happy to get that sorted. Um, I knitted this in my hand dyed yarn. So the pattern calls for a DK weight um, to be held double with um, like a fluff. So I went for a silky surrey and the colour that I used for that is like the red that you can see going through. It's my colourway red, red wine. And then the base colour that I used was my colourway Aglow, um, which I actually used in um, BFL fingering held double. So it was BFL held double with um, one strand of the Silky Surrey. And you can just about see that little fluffy layer that we've got on the top of there. Um, I think I did take a photo of the two yarns together. As I'm sold out of red, red wine at the moment. If I did, I will pop them. Actually, it probably makes more sense to put them there, doesn't it? I will pop them on the screen so that you can see. But yes, this is the um, Baby or Kids Tulip by Melody Hoffman. Um, it was originally in adult size. So if you're interested in a matching set or the adult version, um, that was already out prior to this coming out. 
Um, so the next thing that I finished was my Adventina. So the Adventina is a shawl pattern by Katrin Schubert. Um, it's what I, I decided to use my um, Advent minis for this year. So my Advent calendar was 25, 20 gram mini skeins and I had it in 100% um, Merino or 100% British BFL. Um, I decided to do mine in the um, Merino. So this is pretty gigantic. I haven't, I still haven't woven the ends in, but um, give you a little bit of an idea. So you started out over here. This was the only um, mini that I used up pretty much all of it. There is leftovers of everything else. Um, and then you go into this sort of um, graphic zigzag as we go through. So moves into some greens and some greys, blues, and then sort of tealy colours and bottle greens. And then ending with this lovely rich red and sort of gold colour and then just a fun speckled one at the end. Um, I did vary the pattern purely because when you reach the fourth colour, it has you switch to um, like a lacework panel, um, particularly for this one with it being like a striping colour. Um, I started working it up and I really didn't like the way it was looking. So I decided to tear it back and originally I was just going to push that, that chart back a bit, but then I decided actually... Um, I would go for the garter stitch throughout so that was what I did but there is I think like three different lacework panels that um that go in and out throughout the shawl on the pattern itself but yeah mine is entirely in garter stitch um and yeah once um autumn winter comes back around again I'll have the most huge warm scarf to uh oh yeah <laughs> to wear across the um across the winter period or um yeah, I might just keep this as a as a lovely squishy um, lap blanket or sample item, I'm not quite sure. Um, I will just mention while we're on this, actually, if you're interested, I have already launched this year's advent calendars, which I know seems like massively early, but they are lots of work. And with all of the shortages and everything last year, I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty of time to get those sorted. So if you are interested, the only um, difference in terms of the yarn to last year is that I'm doing 24 20 gram mini skeins this year. Um, again, it's available in the 100% British BFL or the 100% Merino fingering. Um, the theme for this year is a Christmas of togetherness. So I'm gearing the calendar up around all the things that we couldn't do last year. Um, so think of sort of rich, cosy, warm colours, things like mulled wine, hot cocoa with friends, Christmas tree picking, mince pies, all that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, they will be a mixture of speckled, variegated skeins, tonals, and they will designed to, it will be designed, sorry, to um, sort of dip in and out day to day. So if you wanted to do what I did last year and work something up through the month of December, you will definitely be able to do so, but they will of course also be designed to work together as a whole. So if you wanted to hold those back and then decide what you wanted to do afterwards, you can of course do so. And um, if you are interested, there is an advent calendar section on the shop at the moment. And at present there are three payment options. Um, there is Painful, there is PayPal Pay in 3, um, which is a, um, a PayPal method where you can split the total payment across the three. Um, or there is the ability to pay with just a deposit. Um, at the moment, it's a £25 deposit and then the balance of the calendar, which is a total of 130 is split across um, two subsequent payments. It's up to you when you make that payment, um, the final two instalments, as long as it's done in full by the 31st of August. So with that being said, I will probably shut down the instalment payment in June so that there's time to um, sort of do the instalments before that cut off. And yeah, I am super excited to get going with these. I absolutely loved Advent season last year. I absolutely love Advent season generally, but although it was stressful, I really, really enjoyed putting the Advent calendars together. So I can't wait to get going again this year. Um, just thinking if there's anything else I wanted to say about the Advent calendars. No, I think that's anything, everything. If you are interested and you'd like to see some um, like collages, mood boards, um, some of the questions that I was asked on Instagram, if you pop over to my Instagram page, that's at yarn with the yarn, there is um, an advance like highlight just below um, the um, profile details that it has at the top. If you click through those, you'll be able to see um, some photos of the sort of colours that I'm thinking of and then also some of the um, questions that I was asked on Instagram but of course if you do have any other questions please do let me know. 
So the next pattern that I had finished was what I'm wearing today. This is the Yun sweater. Um, it's a pattern by Yura. She's more commonly known as Knit Boot on social media. Um, so as you can see, it is a beautiful lacework yoke. Um, and then the rest of the body and the sleeves is worked in stockinette. Um, I've gone for a sort of high hip finish and I did just vary the sleeve length just to bring it just above my elbows. I think the um, pattern called for full length sleeves, but obviously... Um, easy to vary to whatever you would like. Um, the lace work is um, really clear and simple and very repetitive so although it looks um, quite detailed it's actually um, pretty easy to get to grips with and yeah it just repeats from that point as soon as you've got it down. Um, the yarn that I used for this was my Silky Alpaca Linen, which as you can probably guess is a blend of silk, baby alpaca and linen. Um, it gives you, you can see, it gives this like beautiful sheen and a gorgeous drape. It's really, really lightweight. So um, I feel like this is going to be great for summer and then layering through autumn and winter over the top of dresses or sort of long flowy vest tops with jeans. It's, yeah, it's a really great um, yarn. I absolutely love this base. Um, and this particular colour is uh, my colourway Benevolent Badger. Um, on a um, normal protein base that comes up as quite a deep inky black colour. Um, this is BFL Aran. That gives you a bit of a better idea of it. Against this it's quite different. Obviously with this base having the plant content and also being a non superwash base it does tend to take the colourways um, quite differently. So as you can see with this one, it's sort of like a mid grey, almost like metallic-y silver colour. Um, absolutely love it on this base. Really, really pretty. Um, just up here, oh no, I don't think you can see actually on camera. Um, there are a number of silky alpaca linen bases in the colourways in the shop at the moment. So um, if you're interested, you can have a look at what sort of colours are there. But I have also got kits for this particular pattern up. Um, the size that I knitted, I think, was the size four. Didn't make any variations at all. And I used less than three, um, three skeins of yarn. Um, so we then hit the cold weather. Um, and I suddenly had to whiz up a number of hats. So the first one of those that I knitted was um, this. This is the cocoon hat. Um, it is a pattern by La Maison Rilili. Now, I've probably completely butchered that, so I do apologise, but I'll pop the details on the screen and down below. Um, this was knitted, actually, in Benevolent Badger, so I could have just grabbed this. Um, but this was in BFL DK Held Double. Pattern calls for a chunky weight yarn, I believe. Yes, bulky weight yarn. So I did D DK Held Double. Um, and yeah, you can see we get all these like inky blues, blacks, greys. Um, is a slightly um, slouchy, loose beanie. Let's see if I can, I don't think I've got a photograph of this one and give you a bit of an idea of the sort of shape. So yeah, this I made for um, my husband and um, thankfully has been wearing it loads since. So it was obviously, obviously a good one, but yeah, I thoroughly recommend this. I didn't make any variations to this at all. Um, yeah. So that's the cocoon hat. I think on the pattern itself, there is a variation to do a more tighter fitting beanie. But yeah, this is the cocoon one with a little bit of slouch at the back. In fact, I think there's actually a more slouchy version as well, thinking about it. Um, but yeah, there's, it's a great pattern. There's a few options on there either way. And then straight after that, I went into a hat for my son. This is um, Rafa's hat, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli. Um, this is knitted in my uh, Merino Donegal Aran White yarn, and this is my colourway Early Hours. Um, you can see it's like deep blues with some sort of mid blue and then sort of silvery um, light blue patches. And the Merino Donegal is just a natural fleck running through there. Um, this pattern I did vary um, because I started with the adult size small um, for the sort of stitches cast on. So what I did was just two repeats. How well are you going to be able to see in the space? But there is like a garter ridge running across. Um, so the pattern I think called for three repeats and I just did two before going straight to the crown decreases. And this is a really great fit on him. So yeah, he is um, six. So yeah, so that was a really nice one. And then I did also do for my daughter the um, garter ear flap hat. And this is a pattern by Pearl Soho. Um, I used scraps of some of the other projects that I've been doing. And I um, will pop a picture on the screen of 
the hat and my daughter wearing it. Um, she's in bed at the moment, as usual. I'm filming in nap time. And the hat is in her room. I'm definitely not creeping back in there to get it. So um, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an idea. But essentially I did um, like a fade working up from the ear flaps sort of to the point. And then you get a little sort of tufty yarn ends bit right on the top of the sort of pixie point of the hat. Really clear, nice pattern. I really enjoy that one. I think I've done it previously. I've already cast on another one as well. So yes, that was a really good one. And I think I did it with, let's have a look. Scraps of fingering held double and one strand of silky surrey. So yeah, it's like um come out at somewhere between a DK and an Aran weight, um, sort of slightly thick and yeah, with a slight bit of soft fluff to it. Um moving over, the next thing that I cast on, so at this point we were starting to come up towards um moving house, lots of things in boxes, so I decided to keep yarn out for um, the next thing that I knitted up and then also just to try and work through some of my scraps um, and to do this I did a pattern which I have done previously and I absolutely love and that is the Penguino by Stephen West. This is the Penguino that I knitted, did this ready for my daughter's um, second birthday because I knew it would be either just before or just after around about when we moved. As it happens it was the end of the first full week after we moved house. So it was great to have this done. So that's the front and then the back looks like this. So get these lovely 3D welts, lots of texture and color. And of course you can um, do whatever colors or you could even do it as a, you know, an all over color if you wanted to. But um, I did this in um, lots of fingering weight scraps again. The, um, he varies the sizes and the pattern by varying between a DK weight and an Aran weight. So I went with the 12 to 24 month size, partly because um, I knew that I thought my daughter would fit that size, um, but partly also just so that I could hold up, hold loads of my um, fingering scraps double to get the DK weight and use all those up in this. I think this is going to be a really lovely um, memory garment to hopefully be able to keep afterwards if it if it holds up okay because I've got a few sort of special yarns in here. This back panel is um, my first Christmas colourway. This is um, socially distanced Santa from last last Christmas. And then the colour that's on the sleeves is the first ever colourway that I dyed up. Um, I don't sell it or anything it's just um, just one that I had from when I tried out dyeing originally, so it was really nice to get that in there. Um, so everything in this is just fingering weight held double, so with this it was sort of dropping and picking up a strand of a different colour as I went through to give this sort of fade effect across the front panel, and I decided to mirror that on the other front panel as well. And then I did add some silky surrey um, just in my Casper colourway, which is like a white with sort of sil light silver through it, just for the um, sort of bottom band and the, um, the neck band. So yeah, so that's my penguino. Um, I think I might have a photo of my daughter wearing it on her birthday. So I haven't got any sort of posed photos or anything, but if I have, I'll put them on screen and hopefully that will give you a little bit of an idea of that on. Um, and then this year I started for the first time doing a mystery club. Um, so I decided to do it quarterly for this year and we've already had January and April. So there is July and October to go. So I just thought I'd share um, the yarns that have been in that so far. And for January's I did use them to knit up a shawl. So January's mystery club was, this is the main colour. So it is a variegated and speckled skein of um, predominantly blues and greens. And then the mini skein set that went with it was this lovely fade. So we go from a sort of really rich coppery bronze colour with like lilac running through it to slightly lighter version and then a sort of bronzy one that's not got any of the lilac. Um, and then more of a gingery colour and then ending in like this sort of blondy colour. So that was the whole set together. Um, there are options with the club to either go for 100 gram skein, mini skein set or both. Um, and yeah, if you're interested in joining, spaces are currently open to join for either just July or for July and October. Um, and yeah, for, for either of those. Actually, I should have said with the advent calendar, if you are further afield and you'd like any of these, um, I will try and prioritise with both the advent calendar and the mystery club. They will be sent um, 
early so that you receive them uh, you know in plenty of time before advent season obviously all the calendars will be sent in decent time but i would just prioritize getting um international orders out but yes this was january's club and i decided to knit the drifter this is um, a shawl pattern by tammy gore and what i did was got this lovely big point in the sort of main color and then i worked through the mini skeins to sort of fade throughout the rest of the shawl ending with this lovely sort of blonde tip so let's see the middle section there and i have got leftovers of all of the colors so yeah i thought this would be a really nice one really nice coloring going forward into spring and summer as well it's also um obviously because we've only got the 100 gram skein and then effectively um, these are all 20 gram skeins so you've got another 100 grams in this but I had leftovers of everything so you're not even using two full skeins to do this so it's a really lovely just nice lightweight shawl just that extra cover up where you can just you know pop it over your shoulders going forward into the warm weather if you wanted to so that was a really nice one didn't do any variations at all to the pattern um, so yeah that was the drifter by Tammy Gore and then also just to share as well the April um, mystery club was this so the main skein is this lovely skein of like bronzes and greys with a heavily speckled section up here. So we've got browns and teals and greens and yellows. Um, yeah, really fun sort of lovely speckled section there. Um, I absolutely love this colourway. So I think it will be making a return generally at some point. Um, but to go with that, there was another fade. So this is a blue based fade, as you can see. We started with this um skein of like charcoal and deep blue then went into like a two-tone um navy blue with like a mid blue then threw into teals and then a slightly lighter version of that and then ending up with this sort of barely there um speckled skein of um teals and blues and silvers and greys how much we're gonna be able to focus on that no doesn't think it wants to hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea so the two of those together looked like that so yeah i'm looking forward to getting going with july's and yeah sad that there's only july and october's left but it's been really really fun to work through those this year um and then the other thing that i prepared ready for when we moved house um in advance of my daughter's birthday was again another garment for her so this is the love note by tin can knits um, I went and chose Berry Go Round in 100% Merino fingering and I held that with Red Red Wine again in the Silky Surrey. I actually used the leftovers from the other project that I had that in. Um, so I'm sure most of you will know this pattern, but you get a lacework yoke section and then um, you can knit whatever length. I've gone for a cropped length and I did work the short rows. So as you can see, the back hem is slightly longer than the front. Um, as usual with tin can knits patterns, this is really size inclusive. I think it goes from like baby newborn size right up to, um, I think it's adult 5X, something like that. Um, super clear, yeah, really great pattern. I know lots of people um, have knitted this, but this was my first venture into um, Love Notes and I'm waiting to make myself one. So yeah, it was a really nice one. And I think in that one, have I got a note of what size I knitted? No, I haven't. I would imagine it would have been somewhere around the 18 months, two year size. Again, I have a feeling I might have a picture of my daughter at her on her birthday in it. If I have, I will pop it on the screen. Um, then we moved house and I think I had like a little bit of a break dipping in and out of things whilst we were initially moving. The next thing I knitted was for myself. Um, this hasn't got the ends woven in as yet, which I think I've just got on with wearing it and left it. But this is the framework bralette. It is a pattern by Jessie Mae Martinson. Um, and you can see you get this lovely reverse stockinette section with this lovely um, sort of distinct line running down the centre of, um, of the cup. And then these dividing bits through the centre front sides and the centre back. Um, the pattern um, helps you to sort of get a custom fit with a couple of measurements, nothing too complicated. But I think from memory, it was like upper bust and full bust. So you could work out how much length you needed in the, um, I guess, the cup section. Um, and then obviously for how to work out how much um, length you wanted in the straps. And then these are 
um, grafted together at the top. Um, I knitted this one in my colourway Cruella, which is um, a skein of like a bear yarn with lots of speckles of greys and blacks. Um, and this was in 100% British BFL DK. And um, with it being a slightly more sort of structured and supportive garment, I um, thought it's best to go for the BK, DK, sorry, for the BFL, that has a little bit more um, bite and structure to it. So if you're looking to um, wear this as a standalone or you just want it to have a little bit more support to it, um, something like a BFL um, would be a better option than a drapier merino for that one. Um, and then... I, very recently I've picked up quite a few new projects. Um, I think I'll just quickly share with you at this point some of the new colourways that I've had to go into the shop. Um, so I'm really excited about some of these. So this was one of the um, themed colourways I had for one of the virtual shows that I did recently. So it's currently in my shop as Block Party because the event was Fibre Block Party. So it's a really fun skein sort of starting out. It was a rich plum and working through reds, um, pinks, oranges and ending with this beautiful golden yellow colour. There are lots of speckles and splashes running through it as well. And then some of the other new tonals that I've added over the last week or so. Um, I've got this beautiful sun, sunshine yellow called Hey Sunshine. Um, but it's, it always wants to blow out. But it's like the perfect sort of mid happy yellow colour. And then I have got um, the Deep. This was um, an advent colourway from last year. And as it was the most requested, it was the one that I dyed up first. So as you can see, it's a really lovely deep um, teal inky dark blue colour um, and then I have got this new colourway this is ember and it is a really rich sort of brown almost black base with like a glowing orangey red core um, and then I've got dabba d which is this um, more muted blue sort of like a clear skies blue I have got grows on you which is this beautiful rich olivey green with like patches of almost like lime going through it um, and I thought I might be using these ones as my palette for the um, Suzanne Summer MCAL which I'm hoping to start on Friday um, if you're interested I do have kits in the shop for immediate dispatch if you're still looking for something but she'd um, she gives some guidance on sort of like the colourways that she'd um, suggest or rather not the colourways but how they work together so her suggestion for the brioche section was using um, sort of like a high and low contrast from the same colour family or the same side as the colour wheel so I thought these two might work together and then there's then effectively like a background colour and a contrast so that's where I thought those two might might fit in. Let me know what you think. Have you picked, are you taking part? Have you picked your colourways? I'd be really interested to see what, you, what you've decided to go with. Um, so moving on with other things that I have already finished. Which was next? I think it was this one. So I have recently finished a another jumper. This is a colourwork yoke, as you can see. Um, it is the 27 sweater which is a pattern by Yura again. Um, again, it's a test knit. This pattern is not out as yet, but will be coming out, I believe, in June. Um, so we've got this lovely um, colourwork yoke section. I've used um, my colourways. Fresh is the more vibrant green, so the green running across the cross section. Um, only a ginger. And then the deeper, sort of more bottle green is my colourway Kingfisher. And then the main colourway is Benevolent Badger. This is on a brand new base for me. This is a 100% merino springy high twist worsted. So I tend to find that merino doesn't hold particularly well for things like cabling or colour work. But in this base, um, the high twist really helps to um, for it to hold definition better. As you can see, the colour work section is really beautiful, really clear. I absolutely love this base. It is so soft and does such a good job with these sorts of things that I think I'm probably going to be swapping out my um, Aran bases, so the Merino Donegal and the BFL Aran, in favour of this. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in those, they're on sale at the moment. But I have got this in the shop, not dyed up, but on um, dyed to order. So if you fancy it for anything, either just drop me a message or pop on there and you will see it um, ready to, to go with whatever you fancy on it, really. Um, so I knitted this with the short row shaping on the back and then um, it's actually from um, a bottom up sweater so you cast on 
right at the bottom of here and work upwards before hitting the um, colour work yoke section and you sort of join the sleeves at the same time so you'd have already knitted up to that point. Um, I must admit, like in general, it doesn't tend to be my favourite construction method. I tend to prefer top down sweaters, but I actually really enjoy doing this. Um, and yeah, I think it's been quite a while since I picked up any colour work and I forgot how much I enjoyed it. This was so speedy, so enjoyable. I will definitely be doing um, some more colour work going forwards. Um, and I'm really looking forward to being able to just wear this all the time. The weather here with it being so horrible, I have been just living in this at the moment. And yeah, just for a, um, a glamorous float shot. Oh, look at those. Love seeing the reverse side of the floats in knitted jumpers. Anybody else? Is that a weird thing to want to see? I don't know. But yes, so the 27 sweater is based around um, the Bernie sort of mitts patterns um, that you might have seen a couple of um, kicking around at the moment. But Yura is a um, very size inclusive designer. Um, she's also just generally an inclusive designer and all of her patterns at the moment are currently free um, via her website. So I'll pop the details below um, and I will post um, on Instagram when I know that's due to go live. And then the next thing that I did, I think this is gonna end up being really long. I'm sorry if this is like really rushed through. If you have any questions, let me know, but I feel under pressure because there's just so much stuff. That not actually too much left now. But I then casted on the spring sorrel. Again, I'm sure a lot of you will have seen this. Um, this is a pattern by Wool and Pine Designs. I knitted this in my the deep colourway, so the one that I mentioned previously. Um, and yeah, so we get this beautiful um defined drop stitch yoke. Um, I decided again to go for the BFL DK to get that, you know, that really like noticeable def definition on those. Um, there has been a, I think it was the Sorrel Tea originally and then the Summer Sorrel last year. This one, as opposed to, I think at least one of the others had a strand of fluff with it. This is just a DK weight. So I've just got the BFL DK on its own. And yeah. The other difference of this one, there's some brilliant videos from both Abby and Selena explaining how to get your perfect fit. Um, so they guide you through um, how long to work the um, sort of drop stitch section for so that it hits around about mid bust. And then you, with this one, you do some decreases. So as you can see um, down the side, that sort of like tapers in. And then the intention is that that hits, this ribbon section hits about here would be like the narrowest point of your waist. So you stop um, about an, an inch before that point and hit the ribbing section. Um, and yeah, then the sleeves is literally like, I think it was like one or two rounds before hitting the ribbing. But yeah, watch the videos because that's super helpful. The pattern's pretty clear in itself for like how to do all of that. But the videos are just found really, really clear and helpful. But yes, this is my spring sorrel. Um, and then one pattern that I've been dipping in and out of, I haven't finished this and I've popped it to one side at the moment whilst I work on something else, but it's perfect TV knitting or mindless knitting because it's just sections of garter stitch and then moving on. This is the triangle gram. Um, it is a shawl pattern by Stephen West. Um, and yeah, you start in the center and then just sort of like add, pick up stitches and add each gar garter stitch section sort of going around. So the colourways that I used, I've done this in 100% British BFL fingering and I've got a glow, is this sort of like light orangey colourway glowing in the middle. And then we've got berry go round, full bodied, um, which is kind of hard to tell, but it is a really rich plum with like splashes of like a bronzy brown. And then this colourway is two flower, um, which is like a brown and gold colourway with like splashes of like wine colour running through it. So yeah, I thought I'd go for something a bit different with that one. But um, I'm about halfway through. So I'm going, I think there's a small and a large size and I'm knitting the small. Um, so yeah, I'm about halfway through that because I think it's a total of um, eight panels going outwards for each colour. So yeah, I will be sort of picking up and knitting that as and when I get gaps through other projects. But the one thing that I saw that came out last weekend um, and I decided I needed to cast it on straight away, it was just as I was, I'd was i finished off my spring sorrel, was the Poisoned Apple Tea. This is a pattern by Lily Kate. Um, and 
I'll see if I can pop a photo on the screen of the actual sort of finished top but essentially you have like a sheer section at the top um, it's like a t-shirt type pattern so then you knit the rest of the body and then you get these beautiful um, sort of voluminous structured short sleeves with like a pleat at the bottom so I am whizzing my way through the body at the moment so I'm going to show you there we go so you can see I've got this sheer section at the top this I've used Silky Siri for which is a lace weight and this is my colourway Grey Man and then the body, my main colour is also Grey Man, which I'm using, um, again, 100% British BFL DK. So it's like a tonal um, grey running from like a very light silvery colour through to like a charcoal. And it was a really great construction method with this one. So you do, um, you start each of the um, back panels individually first and then connect those. This will be a um, like a teardrop closure on the centre back. And then you do the same at the front, knit, um, start both of these and then again connect them. And then when you get down to um, sort of like the armpit level, you then join everything together and start knitting in the round. Um, there is um, short row shaping on all of these panels at the top. And yeah, it's a really great pattern. I've, I've really loved a lot of Lily Kate's patterns, but this is the first one I've actually knitted. So I'm really enjoying this at the moment. Um, and when you get to this section again, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show this with it rolling at the bottom. But again, it tapers in with this one. So I'm just going through at the moment working. Oh, you can see it too well on there. This is just this paddle hit pa panel. Sorry. <laughs> Here is the decreases. Um, so I'm just working through those at the moment. And then I'm on, I think, decrease round or section um, eight. There is nine in the pattern. And then it's sort of work until... Um, an inch above where you want it to end so I think for me because I'm quite short in the torso well I'm quite short generally but particularly in my torso I think that probably once I finish the decreases I don't think I'll probably need to do any more rounds I think the pattern yeah it suggests a specific number I won't say actually I don't know where I was going to but yeah I don't think I'll need to but that is my um sorry my ball's looking a little bit straggly now it's getting to the end this is the grey man bfl dk this is the beautiful shimmering silky siri so i should get a lovely um sort of like metallic core to that um yeah i really like this one so that's what i'm mainly working on at the moment today is tuesday um and the sosu knit sosu mcal starts on friday so i'm wondering whether i might be able to finish the body um body of the poisoned apple top by then we'll see i might be pushing it slightly but i'd like to be able to to get there before i get started with that and yeah the only other thing i wanted to show you because i was so excited about this it was actually yarn worthy's first birthday on sunday so two days ago and i decided to do a special a special colorway to celebrate um so this is my first birthday colorway um, it is a really inky um, blues, teals, bottle greens, mid greens sort of section at the bottom. Let's see if I can get one of them out of their band, give you a better idea. And then it works its way up to this lovely sort of like rich, ready orange, um, more vibrant section at the top. Have a look, here we go. And then this lovely sort of vibrant pop up here. I'm so excited and happy about these. I just decided to go with whatever I fancied and um, sort of my favourite colours from across this year. I feel like it sort of pulls everything back together. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that was my first birthday colourway. I have knit a little swatch of it up. I'm not sure without something behind it, how well you can be able to see that. Uh, it's blowing out a little bit, but as you can see, we've got the sort of blues and teals and greens as like the effectively the background with this like zip pop of oranges and reds running through it. So yes, so that's been really exciting. I cannot believe it. it's been a whole year and I'm so excited to see where the next year takes us. Um, I think for the time being, my aim for the next month is going to be to finish the poisoned apple top and get going with the Sosu MCAL. I also had a birthday quite recently and with money from that I treated myself to um, a bunch of fabric which is sat over there looking at me. I have shown such restraint over the last week and not opened the box. I have specific projects planned for the fabric. Um, with fabric I tend to be a bit 
plan what projects I want to do first and then buy the fabric for those projects. So I thought it might be a better idea in a separate video maybe to open those and chat a little bit about the sewing projects that I've got planned. Um, once I sort of get this room sorted I am hoping to have a fixed like sewing station table area so at the moment the reason since we've moved that I haven't really done anything is because um, I'm very much in chaos still generally everywhere but particularly in here this is the only sort of storage that I've got at the moment so once I've got everything in here painted and sorted um, then I'll be able to set something up properly and not have to come in and otherwise clear everything away to create sewing space to maybe only be able to grab 10 minutes um, so I've been much more inclined to sort of pick up and get on with my knitting but I have some really exciting projects planned with those that I'm really looking forward to getting started. I don't know how long they'll take me, but I just still thought it might be nice to, to share the fabrics and share the patterns that I'm looking forward to hopefully making with those as well. So if you're interested in that, um, yeah, I'll hopefully film that very soon. But I think otherwise that was everything that I was going to go through. So a massive thank you for joining me to go through everything today. Let me know what you have been up to over the last five months in the comments and I hope to be back with you very soon. If you would like to check out any of my hand dyed yarns, you can find them at www.yarnworthy.co.uk and you can find me over on Instagram as at yarnworthyyarn. Massive thank you for joining me and I will see you again soon. Bye.